continue to explore racism in South Africa. Remember that we'd love to hear from you, and thanks for those who've been in touch already. Now, Hark for Cape Tonian is a growing movement on the Cape Flats. The non-profit organization wants all black people from the Eastern Cape to leave the Western Cape. Joining us now is the group's spokesperson, Fidel Adams. Thank you Good for joining evening us. to you. Thank you. Why uh, do you want them to leave? We never ever said that. We said that we want all people not born in the Western Cape pre-94 to sell their assets and go home. All right. This is what we did not. 94% of them being black? Um, I don't know what the demographic is, but if it is, so be it. Why do you want them to go home? Um, we sit with a situation in the Cape Flats where our community, the so-called colored community, is growing exponentially poorer as a direct result of the influx, especially from the Western Cape, from the Eastern Cape to the Western Cape, with people coming and taking, and government, government being solely at fault for the implement, implement, implementation of national demographics against the constitutional court order that negatively impacts our community. We've got good young kids sitting with worthless matric diplomas, not getting work because the state doesn't want them. The economy doesn't want them. Well, why do you think the state or the economy, and that's who you accuse of, of hiring those from the, the Eastern Cape, why do you think they'd rather hire them than somebody from the Western Cape? Well, there's an agenda to keep us poor, to keep us down. And why would they want to do that? Well, the ANC sees the Western Cape as a honeypot. These poor black people are nothing but voting fodder to them. If the ANC was serious about poverty, they would have implemented a structure or some type of structure to, 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 to lure business to the Eastern Cape. So poor people in the Eastern Cape can upgrade in the Eastern Cape because we've got now a situation where you've got bad shelter in the Eastern Cape. Coming down to Cape Town, you've got no shelter in Cape Town, and now you've got a protest. I mean, something. you like said it's the, the poor black people coming over. Yes. So the poor black people who are a problem for you. Well, I wouldn't say that they're a problem for us. They are a strain on the infrastructure. Our trains aren't riding because they weren't designed to cope with this amount of people. We've got people sitting at day hospitals from 6 o'clock in the morning, leaving at 4 without tablets because the queues are too long. This is a problem. It impacts negatively upon, not just upon us, on everybody. Helen Zilla said exactly the same thing. She said the refugees, the migrants from the Eastern Cape must stay away. So are you using her role book for your platform? I very, really, I very, very, really agree with Helen Zilla. But on this day, I will. It is hurting our economy. It is hurting our children. I mean, look, we sit with a situation. Where, again, you walk into a shop, right, 18 tolls. 18 black people in Mitchell's Plain. I was at a protest at the Department of Labor, eight client services advisors, eight black people. They are saying to our kids that you're not fit to work here. Last time I read the Freedom Charter, it said that South Africa belongs to all that live in it, except if you live in the Western Cape and you happen to be brown. And yeah, okay, what ha about if there were white people in the queue, if there were Indians in the queue? My attitude would be the same. We've got demographics. This is what government insists on in all provinces. Employ it. Employ your own rule book. They're throwing it out the window because it applies to us. What about secession? I believe that's something that. Oh, that's something that we're gunning for. Pretty excited. We want about an independent in Western Catalonia, Cape. But is it going to work for you? Um, we want an independent Western Cape. We feel that it can work. We feel that. Look, we've been made to feel apart from the rest of this country anyway. So we might as well pack up, close our borders, and have our own country. And we can show South Africa how the democracy project is supposed to work where everybody fits on a common voters role and everybody, white, black, brown and Indian, will benefit from the good of this country. And who are those white, black, brown, Indian people who will be in your hood? I mean, are they only successful people? No. What does it look like? Everybody born in this province pre-94. So how will it actually work? I mean, how do you go about this if you are looking for secession and your aspirations? How do you fulfill them? Well, first of all, if you look at Look, let's, look at, let's, 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 let's get the economics out of the way. We're sending almost 200 billion back to Treasury every year to belong to this country. We're getting back 45 billion. Out of that 45 billion, we've got to do the housing thing, we've got to do the structural thing, we've got to do the upgrades. If we have 200 billion, we can instantly uplift the standard of living of everyone in this province. They won't be a hungry person again. We've got the sea, we can do our fishing, we've got the arable land, we can farm, we've got the tourism industry. We'll turn Cape Town into the Monaco of Africa. And South Africa can watch how we do it. Because at this point in time, the ANC government is slowly but surely killing us. My community is on a starvation diet because of government and its policies towards us. Yesterday, a young man was shot doing an illegal thing. He was buying dacha, biceps. I looked 
at this tactical response team. I was there minutes after he was shot. Eight black guys. I asked, where's the demographic? Because what we now have is I've got eight kids from the Eastern Cape busting here, getting jobs, which is bad enough, but it's fine. They don't know the area, they don't know the slang, they don't understand the gang culture, and now we've just sacrificed the young boy for demographics. Aren't you concerned, though, that these sort of comments stoke increased racism? racism? Racism against you and your community by talking like this, by rising up? We have to rise up. No one else is going to do it for us. Racism is practiced against us daily. You're too brown for a job. You're too brown for a house. We've got 60-year-old grandmothers sitting on the waiting list since 1980, not finding houses. 25-year-old black boys from the Eastern Cape getting houses. Racism is practiced against us every day. Nothing has changed. We've swapped an oppressor. We've liberated this Western Cape. We have, us, the so-called coloreds. We liberated this Western Cape. We swapped a white oppressor for a black one. And I'm not afraid to say it. All right, let's leave it there. Fadal Adams, thank you Always very much for coming in. Up next, thank access you. to water is a basic right. You can stay there for a minute, but for many people across the country, it's still a battle and for some, a legal one. That story coming up after this. Thank you.